Hey everybody, it's Jen with As the World Burns, and you're not going to believe our guest today. So hang tight because we're coming right at you. And thank you for joining us. I have the amazing Jeannie Lewis. I am so excited because this is your first book, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Number one. How amazing. How did it feel? Oh, it felt amazing. It's still not quite feeling real yet. It's yeah. coming, but it's 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 like, okay, did I really do that? <laughs> <laughs> when did you release? Um, on July 1st is when I actually got to release. Okay. Was and that a specific, been, was that a special day for you or was it just, it was just the next closest that you just could get it out? Exactly. It was the next thing I could get out there. And um, honestly, I couldn't believe I would actually figured out how to download the thing to Amazon. <laughs> That's amazing because so, I hear it's hard when you're doing it self-published. So you didn't go through a publisher? Nope, I did it all. Okay. Um, and I, I'm just yeah. in case anybody's wondering, I'm muting myself afterwards because um, there's some noise downstairs and stuff. So I'm trying to keep from having the delay because it seems to be working. But so with this book, give us give us the title and kind of tell us without telling us everything what's going on in your book all right the title is zephra elaine the zombie killer and zephra elaine is a science teacher she teaches 10th grade science and the apocalypse happens while she's at school basically um it has to do with the virus similar to COVID that came out and they everybody to try to prevent them from getting this disease and it ends up turning them into rotting zombies and so she kind of DIYs the apocalypse really she starts using her science teacher um, knowledge and she goes in there and makes weapons and all kinds of things for her students and her to get out of the classroom and get back to her family and then it goes on to take place where they're at their home. And then finally, towards the end, they find them a great big um, place to stay, a compound. It's actually a castle that they find that's not very far from where they live. And so it kind of goes into that. But there's boats in it and there's wheelchairs in it. And there's um, actually a peg leg guy in there. And there's all kinds of things going on in this book. Okay. Oh my gosh. Sounds like it. Um, so is this the first of many then? Um, it's definitely going to be the first of at least one more. I haven't quite decided if I'll keep going with it or not. It's kind of up in the air right now. Um, I am currently working on another book, which is dealing with voodoo since I am from Louisiana. I thought oh, that beautiful. that might be something... Yes, yes, that I wanted to get into. And uh, actually, that book is just taking a whole nother life that I did not expect it to take. And it's becoming a lot of fun. Yeah, they do that, don't they? You know, are you, have yes, you, since, since this is your first, you know, first couple books, are you finding, are you, are, are you panting or are you planning these books? Um, that, that so far it's planning, but like I said, like this book that I'm working on currently, you know, I thought it was going to be more focused around voodoo and it ended up kind of taking a spiritualistic journey that I didn't realize it was going to take. And so, you know, I just never really know. I think I have something in my head and then it goes a whole no direction I wasn't expecting. So. What made you, what, how did you decide now's the time? Now's the time to write a book. What made you decide that? Um, well, 
Um, a few years back, I met Javin Bonds, and um, he pulled me into the uh, Written Undead group, and, you know, he kept talking to me, and I'd been wanting to do this, but it just wasn't, I wasn't quite sure what I, or how to go about it, and um, he just kept pushing, and finally, I said, okay, I'm going to start it, because I, my mother had passed away at least 25 years ago and I wanted to do something to honor her and being somebody that was a big zombie fanatic I thought well that's what we'll do we'll do zombies so that's kind of how it all came about that is so awesome I um I don't know if you've ever seen any of the ones that you know when I first started in 22 any of the podcasts that I was on I got bullied Jack bullied me. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Jack and and uh, James Dean they uh, they bullied me to to write and uh, mm -hmm. threatened me with bodily harm. But you know it, it worked out. <laughs> so um, what I mean have you have you caught in the caught the writing bug then or are you just kind of you're still not sure. Oh, no, I've caught it. Oh, yeah. And now, you know, it used to be I would travel and I'd see a fence or what have you. And I think, oh, that's a good zombie apocalypse fence. That would be a good place to live and all that. Now I see things and I think, oh, man, I need to put that in a book. <laughs> Are you a prepper? Um, a little bit. I'm not real big. I wanted to at one time, but it just never really took off like I wanted it to. Yeah. But um you know, I do a few things. I do have guard, a garden and a, those kind of things. Okay. So, um, yeah. It seems to be a common theme among anybody who writes dystopian or, you know, post-apocalyptic where we all end up somehow being somewhat of a prepper. I make my own caplets, my own herbal supplements and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. I make my own salves and stuff. So I'm like, illness isn't getting me in the end times. <laughs> so do you want to continue to stay in kind of the horror genre or do you want to maybe branch out at some point? Um, no, I think I'm all horror. I wish I was a lovey dovey love story person or, you know, nice and sweet things, but I just am not that kind of person. Um, you know, I have, I'm just a person that's, says what I'm thinking before I even think about it coming out of my mouth. So <laughs> I, I don't I know that I like the horror. Um, I do want to expand. Like I said, you know, I'm thinking about doing, I did some of the voodoo and I kind of thought about vampire and maybe even um, kind of thought about Bigfoot, those kind of things. Okay. But, so, uh, I mean, it's still kind of horror, but it's in like the cryptid area. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Um, I did write my very first love scene in a book, which was very strange. I wanted to do one in the first book, but I was trying to do it with the character that is one of my sons, and I just could not. Couldn't do it. <laughs> You're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, here I am trying to you know, get all these ideas, and I'm thinking, I don't want you to do that. Stop it. <laughs> Right. So no erotic isn't down the pipe for you at all. <laughs> um, maybe in the sick, the other books, but not the zombie one where it, it kind of uh, centers around the people that I kind of use their names. And so I, you know, yeah. think of them when I write. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. So let us get to know you. Tell us the enigma that is Jeannie. Oh, <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm kind of the um, wallflower. I've always been the wallflower. I'm just usually the person in in the group that nobody really notices. Um, very to myself, uh, big reader. And um, basically, that's it. We have a, a family business. We're shrimpers. And so if I'm not reading or writing, we're handling seafood. And so... My life is basically kind of like the book. It's family oriented. It's a whole family affair. And that's kind of how 
things go. Kind of boring. <laughs> I feel it. I'm the same way. It's like when I'm not on podcasts, I'm literally sitting down reading or writing or watching a movie. I am not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um have you always lived in louisiana or are you a transplant no i was born and raised in louisiana and um i live in the family home that's been here since i was a kid so yeah oh wow okay yeah, yeah not many people get to do that anymore yeah that's really nice um, so you have this one out. When do you expect your voodoo book to be out? I'm hoping within another month or two. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm almost finished with it. And, uh, had the internet actually worked on my little trip that I just went on, mm -hmm. I probably would have finished it, but yeah, the internet was the devil out there. So <laughs> yep, it usually but, uh, is. Yeah, I'm going to have that. Uh, yeah, and then I'll start on uh, Zephyr Elaine book two. I kind of mm -hmm. started on it, but I kind of put it aside and started working on this. Yeah. I did want to mention to you, yeah. I had, I told you I had a little story to tell you. Yes, tell um, me your story. Yes. We went to this place Podunk, Arkansas, basically, there was nothing there. And we were looking at waterfalls and I met a lady and she's walking through the, the rocks and stuff. And she's talking to us and she asked where we were from. And I said, Louisiana. And she said, just left Louisiana. We stayed in a bed and breakfast in Baton Rouge. And she said, I had my very first experience with a an apparition actually touching her. Oh my God. And so we sat there and we talked. And like I said, for some reason, you know, when I think ghost, I think you, and that's just pops into my head. That's so funny. Cause um, I'm actually getting ready to take a trip to, uh, I, cause as most people know, I live in Arizona and I'm going up to a little city called Jerome and Jerome is a, um, a mining town. So there's tons of mines all over the place, shut down, and maybe some might even still be in operation. I don't know, but tons of tons of activity up there. And then there's a couple other cities just outside of where I am in Tucson that have tons of activity. But I'm me and another friend of mine who also has another podcast, we're going up to Jerome and we're going to do like I did with uh, Hotel Congress, mm -hmm. we're going to do a ghost yeah. hunt up there. So this might be a regular, th regular thing for her and I, but I, I'm definitely, I actually have to record um, a podcast because there's um, for the Paranormal Proximity, which is my other podcast. Um, but there is some controversy going on with the Conjuring House right now. So I, I oh, love, and okay. you would think that with as much as I love paranormal that I would write paranormal, but no, I write zombie. I will eventually get to the paranormal, mm -hmm. but um, I, I guess, is that something that you'd want to write in? I mean, obviously you're writing voodoo. Mm -hmm. so oh yeah. I, it's probably something I would want to touch on. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, because I, I'm, you know, I, I think, you know, we, we tend to forget there's more than just what we can see. We're kind of, mm -hmm. you know, people, humanity as a whole, we forget that there's outside other dimensions that we can't see and, and that are very active. So I think a lot of people would be interested in that. And I mean, why not? Yeah. Most definitely. Oh yeah. 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 It just sounds like a really, it sounds like a really good um, genre to get into. And, you know, they have those paranormal erotica and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> me up. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. But, that'd be a little strange. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, what can you do with that? Never mind. I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, about how well, how long did your first book take for you to get it finished? Oh, it took me 
about two years. Yeah, it okay. took a while. I, um, I would start and then come fizzle out and start back and fizzle out. And of course, if you need to take time like that, you have to go back and read what you wrote because you forgot. Yes. I do it with yeah. even I, I might have written something yesterday and I still got to read the paragraph before. So I'm like, oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but once I got to a point um, last year, it was like, OK, this is it. It's time to, to tell everybody else they have to hold on. And so I started taking a certain amount of time each day and then it didn't take me long at all to finish it. So, That's awesome. um, yeah, it just I had to get there, you know, and then the, yeah. everybody else is saying, OK, you're just writing. So, you know, nobody really took it as serious as I. Yes, they was. never do. And they never do. Sudden, they're all looking at me like you wrote a book. Yeah, <laughs> this is book. what I've been trying to do. <laughs> but you people won't leave me alone. <laughs> exactly, so how many exactly. words did you finally what was the end product? How many words? Uh, 42,000. Okay. And that's a good yeah. one day or, you know, that book yeah. is a good one day book. You should be able to get it done. I think that is the perfect amount of words for us first timers. You know, yes. those of us that are just getting the writing, getting into the writing, you know, you don't want anything that's too big because then you kind of feel like you're overwhelmed. Not only that, but I don't know about you, but for me, I get like, at 40,000 words. And I'm like, okay, I'm really done with this right now. I just want it out. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I kind of had set that goal and I thought, you know, that's, that's, that's about what I want to go with. Um, I, I wish I had were, were better and more mature of a writer so that I could throw in more words and descriptions that I'd like to use, but I'm just not there yet. I don't feel it yet. That'll uh, come. Yeah. And, you know, I've read so many books and my, you know, my thought was is most of these zombie books is the same exact story. Every time. Every time. So I wanted something a bit different you know so I did go with my dad being in the wheelchair in the book mm -hmm. and I took his wheelchair and, and I actually pimped it out you know I gave him track tires and I gave him a Gatlin gun on one side and a Gatlin gun on the other and oh. I, I went with it a little bit of a different you know way because that's mm -hmm. really what I wanted was something not like everybody else's yeah I and a, not many not many books do I, especially post-apocalyptic books, do I see that people have disabilities. You know, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think that people that have a disability are not going to make it or they mm -hmm. are just hiding out or whatever. But I think you bringing that forward and you putting your own little, your pimped out, you know, your dad's pimped out wheelchair and stuff like that, that's going to be awesome. I think that's going to just regenerate the, I think it's going to change the zombie apocalypse genre. So I, yeah. I really, I know I'm sure people are appreciative of that. I know I would be. Yeah. But, well, um, that, you know, you want to be able to relate to it and yeah. people, you know, I mean, ch chances are if we actually had a zombie apocalypse, I'd probably be the second one dead. But I, I can't run. I am not running. <laughs> they will catch me. I don't care if they're walking. I ain't running. Yeah. I will die. <laughs> yeah. But I will go down having a good time. I can tell you that. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I think I would be, you know, the first one at the door. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I get it. I get it. So. <laughs> What is your what is your next move? You're gonna finish this with the this uh, zombie book, or I'm sorry, the voodoo book within the next month ish, month two months ish, probably month. <laughs> and then you're going to move on to the second one, the second um, number two to the number one, and then yes. after that, I'm just shocked you only have two stories started. 
I have you started looking at everything and seeing, oh, I could write a story about that. I got a, I got an idea for a story oh, yeah. off a street sign. Oh, yeah. I don't know about you. <laughs> Just, I read that. Yeah. I read that the other day, the corn man. Or yes. Something. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is my new slasher. And it's actually a street up here in Arizona, just north of us. And I drove by it one time and I was like, that'd be an epic story. <laughs> started right uh -huh. now. But um, <laughs> I, I guess my struggle is always because it's not a movie. You don't have any visual effects. My mm -hmm. struggle is um, not reusing words, the same yeah. word in the same paragraph 60 times, but also, you know, trying to get out what I'm envisioning in my head and getting it on paper so that you read it that way too. Do you find that as a difficult mm -hmm. thing or do you, do you not um, really have oh, a yeah, problem yeah. with it? No, it, it's difficult, especially um, there was a, a chapter in there that I wrote that I wanted music in the description in this particular chapter. And, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that whoever was reading it knew what I was trying to relay with the yeah. song. You know, the first song was my son singing this, you know, and it was he was down and he thought he was die and that were the words to the song and then as he as we got to him and and got him unburied and he came out you know um i wanted it to come in with the hell to the king stand in the sun type of thing and so yeah. it was really hard to get that where i wanted it so that whoever was reading it and actually knew that genre of music would say oh hey yeah i see what you did with that you yeah know? And it's hard to try and, you know, especially with music, because it's like, you don't know what you're allowed to say in a book or not. Exactly. exactly. And I'm just like, yeah. But, um, and I, I think, you know, I kind of avoid the issue by not even putting it in there. I would love to, because I, you know, there's a soundtrack playing up in here 24 seven anyways. And if I, oh, yes. you know, it, it's, it's, I, I just, I, I can't imagine some of the songs not going with it, you know what I mean? But I just, I get worried, so I just don't put it in there. Um, which leads me actually to my next question. Um, I know you said that your book was actually family friendly, so there's not too much of anything, not too much gore, not too much. What um, is there, there too much is, of in there? Um, I did put, you know, 18 and above. There is, there are some scenes that were kind of icky, gory. Um, there is a few curse words and stuff, um, but it is based on, you know, a fam the family type thing. Um, but I do think if somebody's looking for some gore, there is gore in it. If that's their cup of tea, I kind of covered it all. Right. Yeah. Um, I did how do, put how some do religious you feel stuff in there. Too. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, how yeah. do you feel about trigger warnings? Um, I will have trigger warnings on the voodoo book because, um, you know, it, it has quite a bit of violence in it. Um, it's, you know, it's basically the name of the book is the lady in the paneling. I don't know if you've ever noticed or ever been, uh, I grew up in a trailer house for the early part of my childhood and the paneling in the walls was that cheap. Yeah, I know what paneling you're talking about. Exactly. Well, when I was a kid, I'd go to my bathroom in my bedroom and there was this knot and this knot had horns and a smile and it looked like the devil and it scared me to death. And honestly, I'm not scared of anything now, so I can't imagine me being scared. But I was scared of that stupid little knot in that paneling. So that is how this book came about. There is a woman in the paneling that actually becomes an apparition. Uh, she was put there by Hex through voodoo, and then she comes out of the paneling and starts committing murders. Oh, my God. So that's genius. 
it's kind of like all kinds like i said it went started as voodoo and then it kind of went this way and then instead of making my hero your typical voodoo woman no i made her a spiritualist she defeats these apparitions with god and a voodoo priestess don't get me wrong but right <laughs> she tag teams it yeah hey it yeah. can happen <laughs> i've seen so, stranger things yeah. It, yeah it's kind of weird but um i i'm loving it and i think what i'm going to make her character do is continue to solve crimes and the next crime would probably be a crime done by a vampire then the next okay crime would maybe be done and keep it in the new orleans area by another gone. cryptid yeah. okay oh my god that is a great series i hope so i'm, I'm enjoying I'm, the first book I think i'm invested already <laughs> <laughs> I'm invested. <laughs> so now I just need to think of something else that scared the tour out of me when I was a kid so I can write about it. <laughs> um, well, I mean, what around in Louisiana, what kind of cryptids are out there? I mean, do you have the swamp thing out there or the swamp man well, or something? Not really. I mean, you know, um, I'm sure we could come up with something, you know, um, but I mean, I, I haven't really heard too many tales about a swamp thing. I need to start some, huh? <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, um, just ridiculous things that scare kids when we were younger, you know, the stupid stuff, especially I grew up during, I was just talking to somebody else about this, the great satanic panic where everything would, would cause you to, <laughs> everything caused some kind of demon coming in your house. <laughs> Oh. oh, absolutely. I can remember being a kid and my mother not letting me listen to certain albums because. Yep. I could not um, watch the Smurfs or the Care Bears. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It was bad. So, but um, yeah, I mean, I just think, you know, I, I think that's really awesome and that you are, you're already branching out and already doing another book and, and it's in a different genre and you already have plans for, you know, a couple, because that one is one that could go for 20 books. It I'm really thinking could. so, you know, mm -hmm. and it really could. I could really just go at it from any angle I wanted to. Yep, you really could. And you could do a lot of different things. And who knows, maybe this lady gets called by someone in Idaho, you know, you never know. <laughs> yeah. And she travels. <laughs> so. um when you are when you're writing and stuff like that once everybody started allowing you to write what is your kind of like your um your area look like are you on the couch are you in your bed are you wherever you feel comfortable at that moment at a desk i need snackies in my purple drink I have to i don't know about you so what is a day of writing in your day Oh yeah, it's it's in my bedroom in my bed most likely, um, but I've kind of learned to adapt. Um, I do most of my writing on my phone, simply because it's always with me, and I'm always yeah. uh, traveling. We do a lot of doctor's appointments. Um, mm -hmm. I have fought um, carcinoid cancer for nine years. Oh my God! And so. Every 28 days, I get chemotherapy. And then I have, you know, of course, the testing and the blood work and all that jazz. So three-fourths of my time is in the core or at a doctor. So yeah. I kind of learned to adapt to my surroundings. And that's great. That's basically what I do. Yeah. But a great day of writing is me in my pajamas in bed with a Diet Coke from Sonic. And <laughs> nobody likes me. <laughs> yeah. So silence. <laughs> yes. See, I, I have Supernatural playing in the background usually when I'm in my office writing and stuff like that or um, like in between all the podcasts that I'm doing because, you know, I, I kind of record them lumps at a time. And then um, so I'll have like a whole day where I'm up here doing podcast after podcast after podcast. And, you know, just having snackies or, you know, my Supernatural playing in the background, it just kind of okay, I'm in the zone, you know, 
which shockingly yep. enough, even supernatural doesn't ha give me paranormal vibes. I just, I write zombie. <laughs> so it's really <laughs> weird, but, um, I do plan on, <clears throat> excuse me. I do plan on branching out and doing, uh, some kind of paranormal or some, something mm -hmm. like that. I, I did, I have always wanted to, doesn't mean I'm going to be good at it, but I do have a love for it. So we'll yeah. see. <laughs> It'll be great. Um, I'm sure. I hope so. Cause I, I, you know, zombies are cool and everything, but you can only do so much with those. But, um, yeah. And so, that's kind of how I feel too. Yeah. And, and you do, you do need to have, you know, you need to have a revenue, a, another revenue stream. You know, I, I always mm -hmm. tell people don't do just one do a couple, right. you know, you got, I, I write, I have, you know, in a couple different genres. Now I have, um, a, uh, I make salves and, and, um, mm -hmm. oils and I make, uh, chapsticks and stuff that I take with me to conventions as well, which sold almost as well as my books did the last convention mm -hmm. I was at. So I was really pleased. Um, but, oh, that was a question I had for you. Do you have any idea if you plan on doing any conventions? Oh, yes. Um, I normally actually do what you consider craft shows, not a convention. I actually sell jewelry um, and I paint, I toll paint. But when I do those things, most of my stuff is, again, in the horror area. So I have lots of cool little, you know, the seeing eye necklaces and all those little yeah. things, uh, the voodoo doll necklaces, the coffin stuff. The So, you know, I do plan to, uh, I know I will be at the Orthocon in Dallas next year. Okay. Uh, my book didn't come out fast enough for me to get enough copies to this year. Yeah. But, um, so I plan it for next year, but I would like to do at least two other types of a convention to kind of get out there and try to get, cause that's been the hardest part is nobody knows me and it's yeah. trying to get it out there so that people will read my book. Um, and I, 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 yeah, cause I did that. I wasn't sure if I was even going to make my table money back. You know, my, mm -hmm. I, my first convention was this last July, but I, I did, I was actually very surprised. I did very well. I made my table money back and then some. So there's That's always, true. it's also about how much you push yourself and market yourself too, which right. when you're ready, let me know. And I'll give you some, I, I, I I'll, I'll tell you what worked really well for me, but, and it helped that I didn't have just okay. one book. You know, it always helps that you have more right. than one book out. So, but, um, when you are talking to somebody, because I can't tell you how many people that came up to me at the convention and was like, oh, I wanted to be an author. Or, oh, I write too. You know, I haven't gone to anybody yet. What, what advice would you give to somebody who maybe has started a story and it's just sitting in their computer? I would probably tell them that the same thing that I tell myself is if you really want, you have to go get it. You have to get up and do it and yes. do it and do it. And there's, you know, it's kind of like the same thing with dieting. You know, you, if you don't want to eat something, then stick some, stick your picture on the ice box. And every time you go to it, look at it and think, I don't want to look like that girl and turn around and go the other way. So just keep on with your riding, but it's as hard so easy to say it and it's a whole nother story to do it like but everything you, else yep but i think and it's like everything else if you really want something bad enough you'll get it and do it and sometimes it just takes a while that's just the way it is yep. you know? yeah yeah because it seems like uh the more books that i'm getting out the longer it's taking me for to write them but i think that's also because it's a series and i gotta mm -hmm. stay with the story but um you know coming up with something off the top of your head it's not as easy as people think is it mm -hmm. oh no not at all <laughs> no. No. i know i've been racking my brain to try to come up with a story that is um 
splatter punk and I and I want to kind of tempt a little fate and go to the godless thing and do a short story. Yeah. And I kind of know what I want to do, but then that's it. It's like my brain stops right there. It's like I know that I want to do a killer shrimp because shrimp is our business. And I yeah. want that trip to kill everybody but other that than- is so funny and i am so excited i'm there oh, for wow. it <laughs> i am so there for it so, i cannot wait. i guess as time goes on something will pop in my head and i'll be able to roll with it you know now is it a <laughs> jumbo shrimp <laughs> in my mind it's a really big really shrimp. Like a seven foot tall shrimp yeah <laughs> that is like the biggest oxymoron i've ever heard <laughs> so, <laughs> so who did you edit your own book um no i actually had lots of editing problems um i had a person that uh is an editor and was going to do it for me and the time didn't permit and I didn't get treated correctly. So then I found another person and that went down too. So I ended up hiring off the internet. And uh, so this book cost me a whole lot of money. The first one. I'm shocked that nobody stepped up in the written undead community. Well, I didn't put it out there and I, you know, I should have, but I just, yeah. I was like at my wits end and I just really thought I'm done. If I'm going to pay and spend all this money, I'm going to pay somebody and they're going to do what I want. And that's it. Now now I found out um, that, you know, there are a few things I can use to help me. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's what the route I'm going to go with the next one and just Mm -hmm. pay somebody to format because I'm not smart enough to figure out how to format. I use (laughs) Grammarly. Have you ever heard of Grammarly? Yes. yes, actually, Scott Baker mentioned Grammarly, and you know, it was it was a too late to you know, for me to do anything. Right. That, and, yeah. I love it. I paid for a subscription. I, uh-huh. I think my whole year was like one hundred and fifty dollars or or less. Uh-huh. So honestly, I really liked paying for the whole year right up front because I'm good to go, and it's not going to cost too much. But I really enjoy it because it learns your voice. Oh, so okay. It learns with you and it gives you exact like, you know, this isn't clear. This needs to sound more confident. This, you know, it's got a lot of different stuff. I love mm-hmm. Grammarly. And for anybody out there, I love Grammarly. I use it while I'm writing and it, you can't miss the lines because they're red and blue and purple and yellow. And, you know, they're all sorts of different colors, but um, I use it and I edit as I go. And then I read through my, my manuscript and then anything that maybe I missed, Mm -hmm. um, I can go back and either fix or make sure everything's flowing. Okay. And then I can send it off because Uh I mean, you don't want to send off your first, you know, to the editor or the publisher, or whatever, because when I have a publisher, right. so I, um, I don't, I refuse to self publish just because of the fact I've heard horror stories and I am, my patience is nil. I have, none. <laughs> that's why I'm not a nurse. <laughs> so I will, I will, you know, I, I send it off to the publisher who has the editor look at it and then, mm-hmm. You know, and she already knows because Wendy, Wendy Dearson is my editor. She already knows. She's like, I already know. Just fix whatever I find. Yes, please. And it gets published and my book's out and DJ gives me a date. So I'm just like, uh-huh. perfect. This is that's, like the most. Awesome. Oh, it's the most hands off I've ever done anything. <laughs> it's great. I absolutely love Angry Ego Publishing and will continue to just salute them and, and recommend them. For anybody. Um, but they also have a la carte just in case you don't want to use the publishing services, um, but want to use the, the editing. They do uh-huh. offer just the editing too. So, okay. but anyways, um, I digress. The, <laughs> the, um, the editing is a bear, I will say, because there's so many people out there 
who think they grasp, I, me included, I think I know the English language just because I've been speaking it my whole life and I still get it wrong. You know, mm -hmm. and editors are also human. They might miss a thing or two. But there's people that are cool enough to be like, you know, I had someone who read my first book. It was like, I found some things and I'm like, OK, send them to me and I'll send them over to the publisher and she'll fix it and everything will be taken care of. But, you know, she's like, well, I know, you know, you had it edited. And I'm like, yeah, they're human. Editors are human. They're going to miss mm -hmm. things, <laughs> you know. It, but also I, it was my own fault because I didn't read it first, too. So, you know, it was a double whammy. I think that one was my, was the one that I just shipped off to them and was like, okay, I'm done. You guys do whatever. <laughs> I was just like, the rest is up to you. <laughs> so it was, um, it was rude of me to just send off my first draft to my publisher because my poor editor was probably like, oh my God. <laughs> She was probably beside herself <laughs> wanting to, you know, just end it. <laughs> She's probably like, never again. <laughs> but I love her and I send her stuff and I'm like, you don't understand. I appreciate you. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, are you going to think about giveaways or doing a oh, takeover? Yeah. Um, I don't know about the takeover yet, but I definitely uh, signed up for the giveaway that's coming up with mm -hmm. uh, and because I, I have the bracelets and I ordered some stickers and those kind of things. So yeah, okay, uh, I'm ready. <laughs> How exciting! Well, it is just about time. I want to know where we can find you. Okay. Well, you can find me on Facebook at Jeannie F. Lewis. I have Arthur page on there. Or you can actually go to um, Amazon.com, Arthur under Jeannie Loves Zombies. And it will pull up my page on Amazon. And you can find me there. Um, that is I so awesome. TikTok, but I'm not really there yet. So, <laughs> Girl. TikTok is the devil. Well. First of all, <laughs> I sit there and I, I really should. I'm like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to get on there. I'm going to be a content creator. I'm going to do these videos. I don't do anything with my hair or makeup, as you can <laughs> see. So I'm like, OK, nobody's going to watch old haggard me talking about my book. I don't look presentable. I barely look human. And then I'm like, oh, I should do just, even if I just showed my books, I just don't. I get on there and I start scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I like that one. You know, I hearten the videos and I'm just like, ah, I got, I got sidetracked and it's six hours later. Crap. <laughs> Laundry's been sitting in the washer for like seven oh. of those six hours. <laughs> just like, ah, dang it. But yes. I. Yeah. And I'm probably the only weirdo on the planet that doesn't even watch TikTok videos. I only know? do it I'm once not. in a while. It's only once in a while, but when okay. I do it, girl, I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to find you on Amazon. We're going to find you on Facebook. And of course, because you have this up, you're always welcome to post any of your books and sales on the book asylum podcast page. So don't forget to look for her there. Cause you might find some really awesome deals, yeah. but we're so happy to have you. Thank you. I'm so excited for you. Welcome to the author community. Yay! Thank Yay. you. It's been a long time coming sis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is, I us. Know, and I'm, <laughs> This is us at the As the World Burns podcast. You can find us on YouTube at the Book Asylum podcast page, the channel. And I will definitely um, see you soon. Hopefully I can be more regular on my podcast, but I do apologize to everyone. So have a great night. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Hang tight.